Hi, and welcome to this video about CWI student demographics. The intent of this video is to provide you with a broad brush approach to understanding the students at CWI, how this may impact your teaching, and what this means regarding overall student success. This video is not meant as a discussion to the finer points of statistics. The majority of the information that I have gathered is from the annual CWI Facts at a Glance report with an overlay of information from various other census and public data. My disclaimer is that I recognize that some of these numbers may not be 100% accurate because of everything we know about gathering and reporting data. With that, I will return to the intent of this video as providing a broad understanding of our student population. To begin, CWI currently serves about 20,000 students, where half of them are involved in credit and non-credit programs. Our largest program is the Academic Transfer Program, which includes those degrees and certificates under Academic Affairs. As we look at where we teach, there are a couple of ways to look at this information. First of all, we teach most of our students within our two Canyon County campuses, with the next largest location being the Ada County campuses. This is somewhat aligned to the residency of our students who overwhelmingly come from Ada and Canyon counties. More than just where we teach physically, it's important to note that 61% of our courses are delivered in a traditional method, with 30% of our classes delivered strictly online and 10% of our courses delivered in a hybrid modality. When we look at the ethnicity of our student population, I think it's important to look at these numbers as a comparison. Taking into account the Idaho Census data for Ada and Canyon counties, you can see that our student population has a higher level of diversity than the community as a whole. This provides an amazing opportunity for our students and differentiates the CWI community. This group of students is reliant on federal financial aid in order to reach their academic goals, with 51% of our students receiving some type of aid. If we look at these numbers in more detail, it's important to note that the percentage of students that are Pell Grant qualified Pell Grants are determined by financial need of the student. Roughly 2% of our students have a disability with an accommodation agreement at CWI. Again, this number is important to look at from comparison. Based on the 2000 census, 19% of Americans report having a disability, and we are doing a tremendous job of graduating our students with disabilities at the high school level. It is the student's right to determine whether or not they wish to pursue an accommodation agreement at CWI. This comparison of data indicates that there are students within our community who could, if they desired, receive an accommodation agreement. Another student population to note is that 6% of our students are degree-seeking veterans. It's important that we are aware of this population within our classes to continue to honor the service and sacrifices that they have made. Finally, our students do complete entrance exams as they begin CWI. These exams exemplify the academic difficulties that our students may encounter. Roughly 35% of our students test into the English 101 Plus program, which means that they are not able to perform at the collegiate level. Similarly, 23% of our students will take pre-college level math courses any given semester. Some of these students may be in pre-college level coursework for multiple semesters, particularly given the fact that the majority of our students are enrolled in a part-time status. As you can see, this number is different dependent upon the type of credit student, where the professional technical education students are more likely to be full-time. Taking all of this information and a bit more, I want to provide you with some thoughts on how these demographics might look within a class at CWI. Although program and course maximums differ, based on the CWI fact sheet, the average class size is 19 students. And within your imaginary class of demographic averages, 11 students will be female and 8 male. Roughly one-third of your students will be an ethnic minority and a quarter of your students will be over 30. 
the average age of your students will be 25. And with this number, it's important to note that the CDC reports in 2009 the average age for mothers during their first birth in Idaho was 23.8. As an aside, if you're comparing this information to the fact sheet, CWLI lists 21% of our student population as under 18. This number is because we do have 2,700 dual credit students who take and earn CWI credit within their high schools. Because these courses are not on campus, I did not include these students within your imaginary class. While you may encounter some younger students, it's not the norm. Finally, your class will contain only six full-time students with over 60% on financial aid. You will have one student with a disability, but no accommodation agreement, and one student veteran. So why does this information matter? It matters because what you do will impact the decisions that your students make in continuing their education. And our community needs students to complete some type of post-secondary education. Idaho typically lags about 3% below national averages of a working age population with at least an associate's degree. And whether we are looking at the benefits of post-secondary education from an economic, social, or health perspective, we know that our community needs students to be successful. But they come to us with incredible risks to completion. Common correlations that you may be aware or experience firsthand are that delayed entrance into college, becoming financially independent, being a working parent, all while continuing to pursue college level education, puts you at risk to completing your degree. Additionally, more research continues to be done and published which correlates various things like reading comprehension, level of high school math courses completed, and personality traits like grit having an effect on attainment levels. So what does this mean for your classes? Just give them all A's, right? No, we need our faculty to understand that institutionally we are aware of these risks and we have a number of services to help our students be successful. We also need our faculty to understand that we don't expect you to be our students everything because there are teams of individuals within the library, disability services, veteran services, tutoring and advising there to help our students find success. Beyond awareness, there are some simple and hopefully not overwhelming tasks that you can do that will make a difference. First of all, create a community in your classroom. If students withdraw because they don't have support systems outside of school, help them to create a new peer group in your class. Be very intentional about connecting your student to resources at the campus. Invite our student support teams to your classroom or walk your students to the library or tutoring. Whatever their previous experiences or lack thereof, they may not feel comfortable making that first step on their own. Finally, alert our advising teams if, a, if, if you feel a student is at risk. They may not be able to reach them, but we have a greater chance of success working together and making sure that our students know they are part of a community that cares. <laughs>